there are different kinds of meetings. We have a Sunday service, which is a teaching meeting and a celebration meeting. Do we have people standing outside? Because I see some few chairs here that they can help sit down in. So there are different types of meetings. We have meetings that celebration meeting and teaching meetings like a Sunday service. We have teaching meetings where the word of God is taught. It's a wonderful meeting. But there are also worship meetings where we, what the purpose, what makes each meeting different is what the Spirit of God tells us to do, the purpose of the Spirit of God in each meeting. So you have next level prayers, which is predominantly a prayer meeting. So in the next level prayer, all we do is to pray. They are Holy Ghost services, which we also call anointing services, where the purpose of the, me of the meeting is for the power of God to move and meet needs of people supernaturally. And that's why you see people, you know, there'll be different expressions. Sometimes the meetings are combined. It will be two or three kinds of meeting in one. The reason why I wanted to say this is, I wanted to know what type of meeting this is. The reason why is that, so that you can align your expectation with what the Spirit of God wants to do. So that you will not be expecting something else. And the Spirit of God is calling your attention to something else. So, God uses all of this meeting to just build people. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Verse 13. Or maybe we should, let's read from verse 10. Paul says, Making requests, if by any means at length, I may have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Verse 11. Why does he want to come? He says, For I long to see you, that I may what? That I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts. That's a different kind of meeting. He said the purpose of this kind of meeting is that the gifts inside will be transferred. So there is a healing meeting where people come together hoping that they will receive a miracle. But there's a meeting where that miracle power you want to transfer to people so that they themselves become the agent of touching other people. See what he says here. He says... It says this, that I may impart to you spiritual gift. But why does he want to do that? He said, to the end that you may be what? Established. This kind of meeting, what it does to people, that it will just take you deeper into the realm of the Spirit. You will just, how many of you feel it already? You, you're just pulled into a deeper place. It will, two things will happen. Number one, you would catch on to a higher spiritual experience. That's the first thing then some of you will not sustain it, but it will tell you what to pursue. But some of you, as you catch on, that's where you just stay. And you start building from there. Glory to God. Glory to God. What happens in this kind of meeting? The biggest thing that happens in this kind of meeting is that there's a distribution of grace. I will, I will show you what grace does in a minute. You will just go back and what you couldn't achieve, what you couldn't do, you'll find it so easy to do. And the reason why is that because grace has increased. Oh yes, grace has increased. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 10. One of the things you don't want to play with is grace. You know, oftentimes, I always tell you, doing next level, I make people say a lot of things. 
And um, some people do not understand what they're saying. But they get to say it and God uses it for them. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. See what Paul says. Let's read together. I want to go. He said, by the grace of God. What did he say? Hold on. He says, by the grace of God. He says, where I am is a function of grace. You know, people say that religiously. He said, now nah, grace so. But not, not everybody understands it. Let me give two examples. Let me have maybe two of the protocol brothers to come. 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 I, I want two of you to stand here. I want to watch grace and face them. What is grace? Is the ability given to you by God. You will not be able to function beyond a certain level, beyond the grace you have. That's why Paul said, Paul says, Paul says, look at what he says. He says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And this grace was not bestowed upon me in vain. Paul says, all the achievement I did beyond all the apostles. He said, it was not me that did it. It was grace. It wasn't given to them. It was given to me. Grace, see what grace is. It's grace that made Jacob stand up before Esau. Because what did he say? He says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. They were not yet born. This is what grace does. This is what grace does. Grace comes to you and gives you ten notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is your own ten. Grace comes to you, gives you ten notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is your own ten notes. One has ten thousand naira. One has one thousand dollars. How much work would this guy do? That has ten thousand naira to meet up with the one that has one thousand dollars. It's not what he's doing; it was given from above. This is why the calculation is wrong. The playing ground is not the same. Grace has made it uneven. So, someone that has one thousand now will not be running, running, running. How long will it take him to catch up with this person? There's grace. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm praying or thanking God, what I really thank God for is the grace that he has given me. Because the way you know you have grace is that there's a way you think. There's a way you talk. There's a perspective you have. People will just think you are too ambitious. The reason you think they are stupid, the grace has not been given to them. So, they can't see what you see. I remember, I, I will tell you, I remember when I was young. I mean, maybe my university. I'll be talking to my mom and I'll be saying that when I graduate, I will do this in millions. My mother said that, would you just shut up? Because I always talk like that. He said that, you have mentioned, all this, he said, do you think money needs to come to me like that? He said, well, you're a child. Why do you know why I was talking like that? One of my older friends, she spoke to me, I think on Monday. We've been friends since maybe 92. So that's about 20, 20 or 30 years, right? 30 years. And she said, that her, her husband said, if you brought the private jet, he said, I will not be surprised. He said, because when you were just under 15, you said all of these things. He said, one day you tapped me. You said, I'm going to preach around the whole world. He said, he said, every time I see you online, he said, if I don't know that God is faithful to his word, I see you. This couple were my leaders in church. So they were the ones I used to share the visions of the Spirit with. Grace. You know why? Because, because <laughs> they came to tell John. They told John. They said, the man you baptized has more people than you are. What did John say? John said, can any man have anything except it is given to him? 
John say, it's, there's no need to struggle. He's ahead of me. The reason I'm telling you this is that, do you know the grace you function in? Do you know how to grow in that grace? Because all principle at the root of it is this grace. Just like Psalm 20, Matthew 25 says, it says some were given five talents. Some were given three talents. Some were given two talents. Um, I'm, if I'm correct, within the next, either, within, either we're going to start or within the next one, one month, we're starting eight churches. And these are churches that are starting with 500, 1,000, 750. And someone said to me, how are you doing it? Before I can mention the methods, the grace is given to us. It's a grace. That the grace is given to us. Because, you know, there are some things that will be very difficult to achieve if not for the grace. We, thank you, God bless you. We, we are in a negotiation right now for a larger property for the Lekki Church. You know, and last night I just stayed awake and I said, but this is very expensive. And I cannot just believe that we are negotiating for this. And I just said, how did we get here? The grace of God. But how does grace come? Grace comes with instruction. See, this is grace. When God tells you move, grace goes with instruction. So the reason why people don't see grace is that they've not what? Moved. Can one of you come back? Yeah. Chima, can you come? Yeah. I'll give an example. Bring, bring, bring yeah. So you, who, who has the dollars? Give, give it to him. Let him have more. If this guy has, thank you, has all this grace of dollars and all of those things, he has it. But he chooses to pocket it. Will he ever see it? Until he steps out, the grace will not be manifest. The reason why I'm saying so is that some of you, the problem you have is not grace. You've just refused to step out. Are you getting me? The problem, you, you don't like grace. You just refuse to step out. You've refused to step out in your business. You've refused to step out as, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. You always find yourself pulling back. See, if you have grace, what? read that verse again. Let's read. It says, but the grace of God, I am what? I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was what? Not in vain. What did the grace make him do? And because of the grace, I what? Labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. The difference was not just the grace. It was the boldness and the action to step out and do something. For the past three years, your income has been five million. But it's more grace. But for you to step out, you are still waiting there. Pray. You are still waiting there, say Nigeria. You are still waiting there, saying that this, this. But your income can multiply. He has the grace, but he has pocketed the grace. You know, of course, they're watching from everywhere. In just last year, there's about last year, Pastor Handsome was the guy here that would just, what do you call it, carry documents. And ask for reports. And the Spirit of God began to talk to me about starting a church in Abuja. And some pastor has suggested, the pastor in charge of church planting has suggested that this pastor goes. And I'm like, oh, that's fine. But as I prayed early in the morning, the Spirit of God said, no, not him. This one. I said, okay. But I was very concerned because he had never preached before. He had never been an understand pastor before. He was not even a pastor in the Lekki church. I said, okay. I called him. And by the way, he was planning 
to Jaffa. He had told me that last year was his last day in Nigeria. He was moving to this country. I said, okay. So I called him. I said, well, I prayed. And the Spirit of God said this. He said, wow, let me go and pray. Then he came back and said, that's what the Spirit of God wants me to do. I said, so go and do it. He went to Abuja. In one or two months, we had the first service in Abuja. The first Sunday service, we were over 1,000. And that church has been growing from strength to strength. You wonder, you wonder how? Because of grace. But he was sitting here all along. Did you see the grace? Question. You can have the grace. It's not, perce it's not, it's not, per it's not perceivable to the human senses. It takes grace to recognize grace. And the reason I'm saying so is that some of you are here. You are, the grace you are carrying is heavy. All the time you are declaring, grace, grace is my story. You grow in it. You, you grow in it. It's growing. But for you to step out. God believes in you, but how come you don't believe in yourself? How come? Many of you here, you, you should be cell leaders by now. You should be team leaders, HODs, assistant pastors. But every time, God, you have the grace. But all you have to do is to step out. You keep holding back yourself. You keep holding back yourself. You'll be holding back yourself and suppressing. See what he says. He says, but the grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. That means faith, grace can come and can be in vain. Vain means zero. You will live as though grace was not there. Is it not the same thing in media? Many of you are in media. You are still looking for how to be looking for accounts. When you should be thinking of what apps can we create to run Facebook out. In China, their most popular social media pages are not Facebook and, um, sorry, Twitter and, um, and what do you call it? They develop by themselves. Some of you have no business traveling up anywhere. Because by the grace you have, you are a Nehemiah, a repairer of the bridge. You are called to repair cities. You are called to repair cities. But fear will not allow you. The, see, if you're going to go far, the first thing you must fight is yourself. Because nothing holds you back than you. The first thing you must fight is yourself. In that bank you're working, God is talking about being the MD. You say, hey, I'm just a, I'm just a B.O. Start dreaming your dreams of God. This, this is not about grace. Once you step out, grace will walk. Glory to God. Thank you. Glory to God. Very powerful. He says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Ladies, is this, is this all that pertains to you that you're living for right now? God is calling you to a deeper place. God is calling you to a higher place. God is calling you to a higher dimension. The voice of the Spirit is what your revelation. He says, come up, Tita. He's calling you, come up, Tita. Three things that destroys people's success. Number one, the comfort zone. You keep celebrating this 20 million dollar salary. You keep celebrating this, I've made my first one million dollars. You keep saying, I'm thankful for that. But he says, remember not the former things. He said, neither consider the things of old. He said, behold, I do a new thing. All of your prayer. Thank God I do next level. Is that where he stops? When you do live next level, we now move to advanced prayer. What's advanced prayer? We live praying for ourselves alone. We begin to pray for the kingdom. Praise God. We begin to pray for, we begin to pray for China, for, for Afghanistan, for the penetration of the gospel in Benway, in Makodi, in Adamawa. That's what we're praying about. Small prayer is focused on you. They are advanced prayers. Advanced prayers. There's so much that God wants to do in your life. And that's why this thing is very symbolic. Because it's a trait of stretching your faith. And stretching your capacity. 
so that by the time this you finish next week you step out in boldness and say I will not settle the first thing that destroys people is comfort zone comfort zone many of you you don't want to step out of your comfort zone Many of you have mantles of leadership in the house of God. You don't want to step out of your comfort. You keep giving yourself these excuses that are paralyzing your destiny. And God sees potential in you. And God sees potential in you. But do you see potential in yourself? God looks at you. And the same way looked at Peter. And he says, fish out man. And Peter says, <laughs> He said, you, fisher of men. And Peter says, no, no, no. I catch fish. God says, your destiny is changing. You will not catch something as invaluable as fish. You will start catching valuable things like men. There are many of you that God wants to use to challenge other women. Like Ruth, like Esther, like Elizabeth, like Mary. By the time they see what God does in your life, you'll become the reference point of their prayers. But the point is this, these people did not receive the grace of God in vain. They what? They expanded themselves. They stepped out of their comfort zone. The problem is that you have celebrated where you are for too long. Just like the word of God to Joshua. He says you've gone round this mountain for too long. It's time to go forward. You've gone round this mountain for too long. It's time to go forward. It's time to dig new wells. It's time to dig new wells. It's time to pioneer new cities. It's time to dig new wells. It's time to pioneer new cities. God is calling you to a deeper and a higher place. Some of you say, I'm too young. Do you know how young Jeremiah was when God began to use him? Jeremiah did not say I was young. He said, I'm a child. <laughs> you can't even say that. Jeremiah said, I am a child. So I say, when I can't talk, you sound like Moses. Moses said, I'm a stammerer. You know the amazing about Moses? Because many of you, God has, oh my God, if you know the gift of leadership you have, the grace you have, that you are wasting. <laughs> Moses said, I can't talk. I thought God was going to say, put your hands on your throat, be healed in Jesus' name. God says, the beauty of it is that when a man that cannot talk is the one that negotiates for Israel. He said, I will get more glory. When the people that were your classmates, were your friends in company, see you preaching in church, see you becoming the pastor, and they know how shy you are, they'll say, my God, this is a miracle. This is the hand of the Lord. This is the hand, this is the hand of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The media space is waiting for takeover. But where are the Ruth, the Bora, Joshua, Gideon that will stand up and talk over the space? Because church people love church because we play church. But uh, listen. Light, it doesn't shine inside light. Light shines in that darkness. The purpose of you being light is not church. You need to go into the world, go into the banking space, go into the sports space, go into the family space, go into the media space and carry your light there. You know why? In the midst of the darkness, it can point that someone has the light. They are looking for you. They are looking for you. They are praying for you. They are asking for you that God send us light. The point is, will you step out of your comfort zone and step into destiny? Or will you lean backward and stay in your comfort zone? It's time to step out and step into destiny. That's why I said the first thing you have to attack is yourself. What do you attack of yourself? The reason why you don't do what God wants you to do, there's a story you tell yourself that you believe. There's a story. Uh, you know me, I'm not perfect. And God says, you don't understand. I don't call perfect people. I perfect those I've called. 
You're like me. I don't have gift. God says that's the whole idea. I use the things that are not wise and intelligent so that I can confirm the wise. He said, me. Everybody rejects me. He said, that's the whole point. The stones which the builders have rejected. He said, the same stone has become the end of the corner. Are you here today? You need to start planning differently. Some of you, the Lord is pursuing in the banking industry. You need to plan for it. You need to start seeing yourself that way. Some of you, Lord has positioned you in the communication media industry. You need to see yourself that way. Some of you, God has positioned you in ministry. You need to see yourself that way. And stop seeing yourself as tiny, insignificant. You know, it's amazing when you want someone to do something in church. You say, brother, do this. They say, ah, I'll go and pray about it. I say, excuse me. An anointed man of God says, you do something, let's go and pray for him about it. The person that spoke to you, it was Satan that led him. But when they ask you at work, will you be promoted as a manager? Do you go and pray about it? Yet your boss is a canker. But in the hands of God, you go and pray. The reason, this is the major problem. The major problem with people is this. This is why they don't act on grace. There's a story they tell themselves. And to summarize the story, I'm not as great as they think. I know myself. I know myself. If they know me, they will not think I'm that great. There's a story they tell themselves. What story do you tell yourself when God calls you to greatness? You tell yourself, you know, I'm just a young child. You say, I'm just a woman. I'm just a lady. You tell yourself, I'm a single mother. You said, I'm divorced. I didn't even have a boyfriend and I'm 40 years old. And God is saying that, what does that have to do with your destiny? There's a story you keep telling yourself. Oh my God, let's, let's, let's turn, let's check something out. Let's turn into the book of Joshua. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Judges chapter 6. There's a story you told yourself. There's a story. The question is this. If your life is going to change, you need to know the story you told yourself and change the story. Because <laughs> Judges chapter 6. If you say, I'm not perfect enough. Me, I'm not perfect enough yet. I'm still working on my perfection. So I say, I don't pray enough. I don't think I pray enough. I think I still need to pray some more. So, I don't know probably enough. Should I shock you? Just last year, my wife is here. I attended Bible classes just to know more Bible. Because I didn't think I know some more. The reason why is that growth, see, some growth happen outside the process. But most growth happens within the process. You can't learn business without doing business. Though. Before you become a professor that can write theories of business, yet doesn't have one million dollars. The first thing you have to do is to choose. This is what you have to do. And let me tell you something. This is not what you're going to do tomorrow. By the end of tonight, I'm going to ask all of you to write it in the big place in your notebook. What comfort zone are you going to step out of? What is God calling you into? Someone say, ha, Peter sank in water. But at least we know Peter is the only person outside Jesus Christ that walked on water. And when he sank in water... When Jesus Christ came to him, did he carry him into the boat? No. He walked back into the boat. The other ones on the boat that said, hey, 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 hey. They just saw. They never experienced. And I'm saying it to you because I don't want to get to 70 and 60 and begin to regret your life. Judges chapter 6. Somebody say Hallelujah. Look at him and say, God is calling you to a higher place. I'm telling you, God is calling you. Some of you have the call. You know God is calling you to a higher place. He's calling you to death in prayer. He's calling you to lay aside certain things. You know, he's calling you and said, don't just be a Sunday Christian. Don't just be. He's calling you to a deeper place. Some of you have pastoral call. And you're sitting down there with the grace and wasting it. Some of you have calls to mentor young ladies and young men and mentor business people. But what are you doing with the grace? Are you wasting the grace? Paul says, I did not waste the grace. I am what I am by the grace of God. 
You know, Paul was so confident, he said, he said, the grace of God on me was not in vain. Can you say that? But why have you not stepped out? Because, there's, and what is a breakthrough? Let me tell you what a breakthrough is. Every breakthrough happens when you change what you tell yourself. And that's what I want you to do today. I want to change what you tell yourself. The moment the man said that, this is the day I will see. He said, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. He began to shout because in his mind, today is the day I see. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. He began to shout. Jacob was having it okay in Levan's house. But one day came. One day came. He had had it. And that's what I'm praying will happen to you today. That you will come to the place where you are exhausted of yourself. And you will push yourself out of comfort zone into grace zone. Grace zone is first risky. But when you step out, you will find grace. Someone says, why, why is grace zone so difficult? It's not that it's difficult. You're not just used to it. Let me give you an example. Where is it easier to drive in? In the UK or Nigeria? You, for you. For you. How many of you can easily drive in the UK? Easily like that. Just one, two, three, four, five. Out of all the people that go to the UK here. Question. It's not as simple. It's more difficult. We drive on what? On the right. They, we drive what? On the left. They drive what? On the right. Nothing is more difficult. It's just take getting used to. The reason why, <laughs> the reason why you feel as if it's risky to follow God is that you are not used to it. Once you start doing it, you will get used to it. Obedience is a muscle. You have to build it. Yeah. Obedience is a muscle. You have to build it. And guess what? The more you obey, the more you build. The more you disobey, the more you don't build. Obedience is a muscle. You have to build it. God is calling some of you and say, I'm going to call you to this. I'm going to call you. How many of you have God been challenging about your giving? And God has been telling you, this is the first time I want to give one million. I mean, Elora is over there. And she sent me a message some time ago and said that. For the first time, I gave her a million. Not because it's a huge amount of money to her. But it was just a big step of faith that she took. When is the first time in your life you're like, I'm giving my first 100,000 now. And you will almost die. But I will keep building the muscle. I will keep building the muscle. I will keep building the muscle. But you know when I look back, I've conquered that. Oh, tomorrow is going to be powerful. We're going to talk about becoming a warrior. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because those that will take over are not those that will just be sleeping. They are warriors. You will enter policy as a warrior. They challenge you, challenge them. They say, up till now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violence, take it by force. We cannot leave our nation and our world in the hands of people that don't know what to do with their lives. There's a, there's, there's a generation rising from here. Are, are they here? There's a generation. It's, it's a take all matter, man. And so it's a take over generation. There is a shopping. There's a generation of men and women that the power of the Holy Ghost is upon. That grace is upon. Rising from here. That will be sent into the, all the corners of the earth to shake up the whole place. To kick out devils. To kick out evils. To kick out corruption. To kick out poverty. If you're amongst us, say, I'm here. Oh, glory to God. Judges chapter 6. Verse 12. So I have the grace, but I have to step out to use the grace. Tell her. 
this is our pastor in charge of. We have, just for you to know, all of you that below 27, you need to go to the fifth. We just started a new church in Oniru, you know, at Leisure, Lake Leisure. And he's the pastor. When did you become a pastor? What age? Um, 2014, so maybe about um, 23. 23. And he pastored on campus. And he's pastoring there right now. And you said you are too young. How old are you again? And God is using him mightily to change people's lives. Their first service, how many people do you have? Their first Sunday service, they had over 400 people. I did not even help them announce it. And all you want to be carrying is Gucci bag. Your life is worth more than that. I'm telling you, your life is more than a trip to Dubai. Your life is more than that. Your life is more than that. I'm challenging you to see yourself better. All you want to be is the wife of a rich man. Your life is more than that. Your life is more than that. Don't be the wife of a rich man. Be the, uh, be the rich wife of the rich man. Oh, glory to God. Your life is more than that. I'm looking for ladies that will park bus, rent flats in Lekki, go to Admiralty, pack all those girls. Say, I will give you house. I will give you, I will give you money every month. Don't do this again. God sent me to you. He's giving me resources. Why? Because we are the light of the world. I'm tired of Nigerians trying to escape to Canada. We need Nigerians that will enter Canada as kings. As kings. Enter London as kings. We are not looking for 50,000 pounds job. Any industry we enter, we take over. We get to Houston, we take over. We get to Canada, we take over. We are the light of the world. A city set up. Somebody shout Amen. Stand on your feet and shout Amen. Stand on your feet and shout Amen. Shout Amen. We are not here to survive. We are here to take over. The Bible says the kingdom of this world shall become the kingdom of our God and it shall reign forever. Somebody say hallelujah. Please have your seat. When we're going to have NLP in London, I didn't know of any minister of my generation that done a successful large meeting in London. None. I spoke to all the pastors, the pastors, the biggest churches in London. They said, I do not advise it. COVID is very strong. Don't do it. I spoke to the guys in London. They said, Pastor, if you can have 200 people, that will be a great meeting. I said, 200 is too small. He said, Pastor, this is London. This is not Nigeria. I said, no. The earth is the Lord and his fullness thereof. The biggest event should not be some concert that they're singing some secular song. The biggest event should be people gathering, shouting the name of Jesus. And we went to London and packed it out. Oh yeah, we did. How? By the grace of God. You saw it in the news. You saw the blocks carry it. You should say, listen to yourself. If my ministry can be taken international territories, I should be taking international territories. The reason why is that the ministry is the ship, we're all inside. So as it goes, we all go together. Yeah, I have one small shop in Kota. You can do better. Did you read the Bible? He said, What shall become a thousand? Hey, my yeah, come yeah, 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 
Glory to God. Read the Bible. He said things to get darker. He said, but for you to get brighter. Let them keep talking. We are taking over. All sectors we are taking over. All sectors we are taking over. They will soon know that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, there's no other God in heaven and on earth than the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will soon know we are coming. Somebody shout amen. You begin to change the way you think about yourself. You begin to when you talk about, you change the way you talk about yourself. Talk as if you have grace. Think as if you have grace. This, what's grace? The supernatural ability of God is behind me. Glory to God. Judges chapter 6. We're going to close now. Some of you, you know what the Spirit of God is doing? Dreams you've forgotten is reminding you. Uh, have you noticed that? Is it doing that to you right now? Some of you, he's giving you assurance. I know you're going through a lot, but he's giving you assurance. That pump. Is it, uh, I'm waiting for the marriage. You don't understand. Marriage comes when you're at the place of grace. Because outside grace, all you see is what's disgrace. The reason why they've been disgraced up and down is that you have not stayed in the place of grace. Stay in the place of grace. They said, they said, I will not leave. They said, I will not leave. I will not, I will not, I will not join. You are running. Keep running from a place of grace. There's a grace zone. There's a grace zone. There's a grace zone. What is God? God is pushing you towards this. He's, he's multi, he's orchestrating you. He's tearing you up. The year is not over. It's not over. Because some things must deliver. Some things must deliver. Oh, glory to God. Some things must what? Judges chapter 6, verse 12. See what the Bible says. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, Gideon, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Remember, Gideon was hiding. And Gideon said to the angel, Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, then why is all this befalling us? That's the second reason why people fail in life. What's the second reason? I'm going to talk in a bit. It's called lend helplessness. Lent, you lend helplessness. You know helplessness, but it's lent. Because they see the history of their life. How they've not done well. How they've not done well. How they've struggled. They've now personalized their history as them. It's called lent helplessness. Because of all the delays you've been through in marriage, there's a way you look at yourself in a funny way. You said, I can, and you don't understand that sometimes <laughs> failure is the price for success. You didn't lose 10,000 naira, you just bought a success lesson. You didn't get that. You didn't lose 100,000 naira, you just bought what? Success lesson. Because there's no way you will have learned that if you didn't lose the money. Now you've lost the money. You bought the lesson. The breakup was the success lesson for the relationship. So failure is a price for success. So when I fail, I just pay the price. See, see what he said? He said, he said, if the Lord be with us, why is all this happening to us? Is that not the way you talk about yourself? That Lord, if you're really with me, why is this happening in my business? Why is this happening in my finance? Why is this happening to my brother? Some of you, it's not even your own. It's your brother's own. You join to it. You join your, you even join your friend's own to it. And because of that, you become helpless. 
And that's why one day you now open Instagram. Now see a mate of yours doing well. You feel bitter. Because you've not been able to think of that well doing. Because those around you, you've learned helplessness from them. Learned helplessness. See, let's read. He said this. He said, and Gideon said, oh Lord, if the Lord be for us, why is all this thing befalling us? He said, I feel helpless. Why am I feeling helpless? All these things have gone wrong. And where be the miracles which our fathers told us about? Did not God bring us out from Egypt? Now, God has forsaken us. Do you see that? He said, God has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him. And he said, receive the anointing. Is that what he said? What did he say? Ah! That means all the time he was hiding, might was inside. God did not say, okay, Gideon, come on, take might. Mm -mm. He looked at him. He was the one that put it there. He recognized it when he found it. He said, Gideon, go in this that might. Do you know what you carry? Do, do you know what it means to be full of grace? What is grace? Grace is a force of the spirit that makes things happen through you. He's a force. Someone say, hey, Pastor, you know, there are challenges. Oh, we wouldn't go through challenges. We should not go through challenges. You know, when you, when you see someone like me, there's a tendency for you to think that from when I was very young, I was very smart. There's a tendency to think that, ah, you know, his life, he must have known book very well. See, first, second, third was not my position. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. First, second, third, I can count how many times in my life, maybe maximum five times. Maximum that I took first, second, third. Maximum five. <laughs> but the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. God. That shows mercy. Sometimes, you don't understand. Someone says, Pastor, you know you are very bold. Who said so? <laughs> my sister-in-law is somewhere in the crowd. In my family, one of my inheritance is shyness. It's, it's a symbol. If they want to know you are from my family, one of the things you must have learned is that you cannot talk. So, there are things that God tell me to do. I will tell you, the first time they told me to pray, because of how afraid I was, I prayed six hours for one message. The message was 25 minutes. I prayed six hours. So that I'll be so lost in the spirit, I can talk. Glory to God. See what it says. We're going to close now. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might and save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have I not I sent you? You'll have thought, Gideon would say, Hold on, let's go. What did he say? He said, Oh Lord, where shall I save Israel? He said, How? How? Some of you, God has told you, you will build a bank. See, don't say, Listen to me. The first is not how. Listen to me. Anytime God tells you to do something or you be something, don't think of how first. How will confuse you. Think of what he has said and say, I believe it. Once you receive it, the how will come later. That was the, that was the difference between Mary and who? Zechariah. As soon as he was talking, he said, hey, how will it happen? The guy said, you, you, you are talking. I said, Mary said, wow, be it unto me according to your word. He now said, hey, but I'm a virgin, you know. How? She received it first. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What did he say? He says, he says, how shall I save Israel? My family is the poorest in Manasseh. Is that not what you say? Who knows me? He says, my family is the poorest in Manasseh. And see what it says. I'm the least. I'm the youngest. So, all of you that have age story, look at it. All of you that have poverty story, look at it. You must understand the nature of God. I want to close with this. I've not finished this, but I'll close with this. God loves to use things that are irrelevant. 
so that the proud and the mighty, people that booga, people that they are bugaing, so that God can humble them. He will humble them. So the ones that say, I'm Prince Nigeria, I'm Miss Nigeria, this, that one will not get married though. It's the one that says the hugless in the class that she will not marry a superstar man. Say, how? He says, Grace. So that the people that are buga, you, you will cap down and not kneel down. Praise God. Thank you, choir. You will be coming now. Have you not noticed? All the most successful in your class were the poorest boys and the poorest girls. Have you not noticed? All the ones that used to bring cars. Their father was their father. Where are they now? You just noticed that. You just noticed that their names are no longer. This is what happens in Nigeria. When people are not doing very well, you just don't want to say, how is this person? Say, I don't know. Just know something is wrong. The ones that are doing well, people know where they are. They will hear about you. <laughs> in the alumni meeting they will hear about you <laughs> uh, yeah 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 on CNN we will see you <laughs> on BBC we will see you uh, your success story will be all over shout amen listen to me the first thing you have to do is to step out of your comfort zone you know comfort zone do you know there are single ladies here that want to be married and they have closed Instagram? Step out of your comfort zone. Oh, wow. See how I said it by the word of prophecy and they were falling out of power. <laughs> Glory to God. Do you know there are men here, there are men here that have business ideas. All you have to do is to discuss with somebody. Step out of your comfort zone. Do you know people, there are people that call to the ministry your first step to even say, I'm going to go track. I'm going to lead a cell. That's my first step. I'm not going to do it next year. This month, I'm going to do it. Praise God. Can we pray? Let's pray. Stand on your feet. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. My prayer is that the Spirit of God will stir you out of your comfort zone. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. 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 That the Spirit of God will stay you out of your comfort zone. Shelege brege de skepete de mere besili man toko brada ate. Shaba raba de kere betolo roba shaka bana matala raba kapate antosha. Le brege te she brege te sko brante ane mi shuzi mene kete. Le brento kapante shaba raba tonde le kreste brede ha. In Jesus name we pray. I want all of us to stand and um, two things we're going to do simultaneously. Bring out a place you can write and write how you're going to step out of your comfort zone. I want to write it somewhere. And when you do that, I was praying to the, the Spirit of God showed me a vision and it showed me that I should pray for all the women ministry leaders, you know, so if they're here, they should come. I want all of you to write it. Write how the comfort zone you're stepping out of Hallelujah. Right? The comfort zone you're stepping out of. As they're doing it, all the women ministry leaders, you know, there'll be maybe about 10 of you. You can't be more than that. Okay. Would they come forward at this time? Just play a part. Just play a part. If you're coming quickly, come. And I just want the ushers to stay. Once you've done that, Lift up your hands and say, I receive increased grace. And let that be your prayer. Let that be your... I want you to pray for that increased grace. Increased ability. Increased ability. Father, we worship you. The anointing is on you. Bringing you increased ability and grace. Increased ability and grace. Increased ability and grace. As I'm speaking right now, lumps are disappearing. The power of God is rolling. Some of you are feeling like an electricity flow in your body. That's the power of God touching you. Those online, the power of God is touching you mightily. Mightily, mightily. Mightily, mightily. Your capacity is really large. 
God is taking to a deeper place. Oh, Sabarabade Baradi Halibatan. God is healing high conditions. Receive healing in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. We receive it in Jesus. In Jesus' name. We, re we rebuke that devil of infirmity. We rebuke that devil of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. My God. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Everybody say after me. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. I have asked and received increased grace. I will never be the same again. I step out and I see results. The rest of this year is back to back results. In the name of Jesus Christ. I step out of my comfort zone. I step out of my comfort zone. I step into my grace zone. I embrace everything. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.